Welcome to Kids Camp. And it's time for more critters in God's creation. And I'm Keith Nelson from Camp Kalakwa, which is a beautiful little corner of God's creation down in Florida. At Camp Kalakwa, we have lots of animals. We even have lions and tigers and bears, oh my. But I couldn't pack them up and bring them today. So what we have are some more friends for you. And I have some questions for you at the start. Let's see. How many of you know what animal it was that tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden? All right, let's see if Rosalind knows. A snake. A snake. Now, a snake or a serpent sometimes brings fear to people's hearts. And when they think about a snake talking, that would be ridiculous. But you know what? Eve wasn't too surprised to hear a snake talking. In fact, we believe that, of course, that snake was probably beautiful, attractive, not scary and frightening like some of the ground or rattlesnakes we see today. Yes, Docker. You should make my mom come in here and hold it. So you think maybe your mom's afraid of snakes, is that right? I think a lot of moms are afraid of snakes and you bring up a good point, Docker. The reason they're afraid is because in the Garden of Eden, Jesus and, and the Lord cursed the snake and he said on your belly shalt thou go and to this day people are ready to fight with snakes but remember if you see a snake in the wild are you gonna mess with it no first of all some snakes can hurt us that's true but most can't we need them to help keep a balance and today's beautiful snake is no exception and we're gonna see if one of my helpers can bring it up here and show you one of the most colorful snakes that Jesus made for us to enjoy. Thank you, Dean. You can set him right up on the table here. We'll see if he'll stay anywhere close. He's a fast one, and he's very colorful. Do you see how he moves? He makes an S out of his body, and then he can just slither right off the table. Now, he probably appreciates the warmth of my arm because he's cold-blooded. There's a big word for that, too and that's poikleothermic, but we won't go there. The truth is this guy appreciates the sunshine and usually uses that to keep warm. Zachariah, you had a question? Um, I, s I saw one of, a baby one of those. Uh, where did you see that? Um, I saw it near my house. Very good, so you're fortunate enough to live in a state where there are some milk snakes. Milk snakes are usually in the southern United States, Mexico, Central America, places like Honduras. And this one is a Pueblan milk snake, and his name is Pablo. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Pablo the Pueblan. Kind of fun to say. Docker had a question. Uh, if I knew you were going to bring snakes, I would have trapped all of them that I found at the lake. Oh, you've got some around your lakes here? Some like to be near the water. Jude, did you have a question? How does it... Um, stay long when it goes out of your arms. So when it sticks out of my hand, it can stay long because of its stomach muscles, Jude. And what it can do is it can actually lift its body up by the front and look around and lift its head. Just like we have stomach muscles, they have them that go all the way around the whole length of their body. And this one's colorful. He's red, black, and white. Now, he is kind of mimicking another snake. We'll get there in a minute. Caleb, though, he had a question. Let's see what Caleb says. How old is it? This one is only three years old, so he's younger than all of you. Nolan, did you have a question for us today? Does the snake bite? Does the snake bite? Well, that's a good question. Remember, if it has a mouth, it can bite. So any animal can bite. The question is, is it venomous, right? Is there venom in that bite? Well, this milk snake and all milk snakes are called non-venomous. That means even though they can bite, they can't inject a venom that's dangerous to you or other animals. Noah, do you have a question? What kind of snake is it mimicking? Good question. Noah asked, what kind of snake is it mimicking? What does it mean to mimic? What's another word for mimic? Do you know? Um, it means like copying. Copying. Very good answer, Sophia. 
To mimic is to copy. Now, this one is copying what's called, or looking a little bit like, the eastern coral snake. And the coral snake does have venom. And in its teeth and saliva is a neurotoxin that can harm animals and people. So usually when you see red in nature, it's designed to say, be careful, warning, stay away. But tomatoes are delicious. I wonder who the first person was that tried that and said it's red, but I'm going to eat it anyways. So, Kenan, did you have a question? How do they catch their food if they're not venomous? How do they catch it? Good question. You guys are smart. The way they catch their food, Kenan, is that they hunt at night and they have the ability to sense where heat is coming from, like little warm mice, little warm bodies. And so they help control the rodent population. If we didn't have friendly snakes like Pablo, we would be overrun with rats and mice. And it could be dangerous and cause diseases for us. So there's a special plan for them and they can hunt at night. That means if they're active at night, they are nocturnal and they usually sleep all day long and they'll hide out under a table or under some logs or under some leaves. But Alexia, did I see a question? Um, does it just usually eat mice? Right, just, just rodents usually. Sometimes maybe some insects or eggs. <laughs> just like we eat eggs, it might raid a bird's nest for some eggs. They're very good at climbing trees. Even though they don't have any arms or legs, their underbelly and scoots will, will grip the bark and they'll make little S's out of their body and climb right up there. And his tongue is flicking in and out just like the other snakes. And he has two forked edges of the ends of the tongue that go into two holes on the roof of his mouth called Jacobson's organs that tell him all kind of information. They can tell him where the warmth is, how humid it is, and maybe even if I'm nervous, he can feel my heartbeat, by the way, and, and, and blood in the veins. So this one is pretty cute, and you want to be able to touch him and pet him, right? So we'll let you do that. Don't pet him by the head. Pet his back, and if you don't want me bringing him near you, remember to fold your arms across your chest. And that means we agree we won't stress you or the snake. And Pablo is used to being petted. He's used to being seen by lots of kids at camp. Now, Pablo is a solitary animal. What does it mean to be solitary? Does anybody know that? If you're solitary, does it mean you want to be alone or in crowds? Alone. Alone. That's right, Noah. He, how, let's find out from Noah. She wants to describe how he feels. He feels like there's a lot going on around him. He's pretty nervous. He's wiggly. Yeah. Is he wet or slimy, Noah? No. No. Is he warm? No. Just kind of cool to the touch and not slimy. Very good. Nolan wants to feel him. Now, this snake is different in that it has very small scales, very close together. That makes the color pattern more vivid. And I understand, sure. Zachariah, would you like to pet him? How about Docker? No? Yeah? And so this fella, Liam, is not only nocturnal and solitary, that is, he's active and hunting at night and alone, but He's also extremely good at swimming. He can cross rivers that are moving fast and lakes that are deep. He has no problem with that. Did you have a question, Nolan? Let's see if we can get a mic there. Is he gonna shed? Very good question, wow. Nolan wants to know if he's gonna shed and the answer is he sheds about once a month. And he shed pretty recently, which means he's more colorful. When they start to shed their whole skin, even the covering over their eyes, they actually get kind of dull in color and they get kind of blind so they can have trouble seeing. We call that OPEC and then they'll cut the edge of their old skin off on a piece of rock and slither right out of it. If there's a change in size, if they're growing bigger, they'll need to shed their skin as often as they grow. When you grow, your skin grows with you, and you don't have to shed your skin, do you? 
That would be kind of silly, right? Well, there's a lot of gifts that God gave the milk snake. That God gave the milk snake just the right place to hunt and to see. But there's some surprising things in the Batesian mimicry of the other kind of snakes. And there's some surprises, too, in the Bible. Like, I remember the story of the men that were fishing all night long. So they were kind of nocturnal, weren't they? They were casting their nets out this side of the boat and that side of the boat, and they were trying over here in the lake and over here in the lake, and they were hungry, and they weren't catching anything. And then they were giving up and coming in close to shore with an empty boat. Nothing in their boat. And there was a man on the beach, and the man on the beach said, Cast your net on the other side of the boat. And they looked at each other like, what? Well, that sounds strange. We've been casting our net on all sides of the boat. And they said, we'll give it a try. So they cast their net on the other side of the boat. And what happened? Can someone tell me what happened? Ezekiel, can you tell us what happened? The net got filled. Filled with fish. Tons and tons of fish. And here's the thing. Who was the man on the beach, Docker? was Jesus and also how many fish they got filled up two boats. Filled up two boats and they could hardly handle it. Good answer, Docker. In fact, that's the point. When we listen to Jesus and we follow his instructions, we are blessed. We are abundantly blessed because he takes care of us. In fact, Jesus was teaching the men that night that they could do it on their own. And with him, nothing is impossible. Where they believed there was no fish, there was lots of fish. And where we think we can't succeed or we're going to have a failure or a problem or a fear, Jesus can be there to say, you know what? I've got this. I can fill your boat. And what he means by that is, if he needs you to do something, he will give you all the tools you need to do that job. If he asks you to not be afraid, he'll give you the comfort not to be afraid and the peace to go through the storm. And if he asks you maybe to go through some tough times, maybe even the loss of a loved one, he will send his Holy Spirit to comfort you. You will never be alone. You never have to suffer in darkness or be sad alone because Jesus promised he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's a memory. I love that animals can teach us so many good lessons. The beauty of the milk snake teaches us of the surprise of God's abundant supply. And he will always give us what we need. Not necessarily what we want, stomp our feet, beg for and ask, but what we need. He takes care of us. In fact, how many of you have had a time where Jesus took care of something in your life when you prayed and you had an answer to prayer, didn't you? And the more you pray and the more you have answers, the more faith will build. And trusting in God is what he asks. Thank you for coming to Kids Camp today and for learning to trust and obey. We'll see you.